Hello, my name is Dr. Sean Pittock. I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic. And I'm going to be talking about a paper called Autoimmune Dementia that's going to be coming out in the October issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Dementia is a very common and often devastating disorder. Most people know somebody with dementia, whether it be in their family or in their community. Unfortunately, most dementias are untreatable. For most patients, these disorders are neurodegenerative, progressive, and unrelenting diseases that uh, can result in significant morbidity for patients. Over the past many years, uh, neurologists at Mayo Clinic have recognized that there are some patients with dementia that have immunotherapy responsive disease. Several years ago, the autoimmune neurology group at Mayo Clinic, working closely with the behavioral group, began to treat patients suspected of having an autoimmune dementia. And over the past few years, we've recognized that many of these patients had dramatic improvements uh, with immunotherapy. In view of this fact, we decided to systematically look back at the patients that we had treated for suspected uh, dementia with immunotherapy and investigate how did they do. This paper describes 72 patients that were suspected of having an autoimmune dementia and in whom we initiated an immunotherapy trial. We were surprised by the fact that 64% of the patients had evidence of improvement with immunotherapy. Some of these improvements were mild and others were dramatic. Uh, for patients with milder response, sometimes the improvements were detected on neuropsychometric testing. For others, uh, patients reported significant improvements. For example, uh, one patient uh, had significant problems with memory such that they were unable to work, in fact had difficulty even remembering uh, simple recipes uh, for cooking. That patient over a period of a year uh, recovered uh, and actually returned to work uh, in uh, the legal uh, profession. One of the important questions that we tried to investigate in this study was is there some way uh, by which we could predict those patients that were going to respond to immunotherapy and those that were not. In other words, what was different about the patients that responded compared to those that had no response? In this study, we identified significant clinical features that were associated with uh, having benefit from immunotherapy. A subacute onset, in other words, onset of the dementia over a period of uh, weeks, a fluctuating course, uh, the presence of headache or myoclonus or tremor. All of these features were more common in the patients that benefited from immunotherapy compared to those who did not. In terms of laboratory-based testing, we found that patients that had an inflammatory spinal fluid in other words, they had an elevated protein or an elevated white cell count. Those patients also appear to have a greater likelihood of having an improvement with immunotherapy. Furthermore, we also found that patients that harbor antibodies targeting nerve cells were also more likely uh, to have a beneficial response. These antibodies included such things as antibodies targeting the voltage-gated potassium channel complex or other cation channel antibodies. In addition, we found that a shorter delay from onset of dementia to the initiation of the immunotherapy was associated with a greater likelihood of having an improvement with immunotherapy. In the analysis, we also found that patients with a family history of neurodegenerative dementia were less likely to be responders. These are factors we recognized as being associated with either a uh, beneficial response or a lack of response. These factors were identified by looking back at patients. We will need more definitive studies in the future where we prospectively follow patients so that we can try and identify definitive findings. But at least these uh, findings from this study uh, can serve as a guide uh, and uh, hopefully assist uh, clinicians or physicians in identifying patients with potential autoimmune dementias. In fact, in the paper, we have set out a diagnostic algorithm that can assist clinicians in not only identifying these types of patients, but can give some guidance in terms of how to approach uh, immunotherapy treatment trials in such patients. In this study, we used many different forms of immunotherapy. The most common was that of steroid. Intravenous methylprednisolone is a form of prednisone or steroid, and this was the most commonly used uh, medication. We also used oral prednisone, intravenous immunoglobulin, 
and in some patients, plasmapheresis. In addition, as noted in the paper, when the initial trial of immunotherapy was discontinued, many of the patients relapsed. And this indicated to us that some patients required maintenance immunotherapy. For those types of patients, we try to use steroid sparing agents, such as azathioprine or mycophenolate mofetil. These medications sometimes need to be used in combination with prednisone. Again, we have worked closely with our rheumatology colleagues and have learned from their experience. Patients with autoimmune dementia, uh, when evaluated in our clinic, are seen by both the autoimmune neurology clinic, uh, a clinic that specializes in the use of immunotherapy in autoimmune neurologic disorders, but also in the behavioral neurology clinic, where we have many experts in dementia. We also have patients seen by neuropsychologists, where they undergo objective neuropsychometric testing. And we work closely with many other subspecialties to provide a multidisciplinary approach to the management of autoimmune dementia. The field of autoimmune neurology is a 21st century subspecialty. We are now recognizing that there are patients not only with dementia, but with epilepsy, peripheral neuropathies, movement disorders, vision loss, that have an autoimmune etiology and, and demonstrate immunotherapy responsiveness. The last 10 years has seen a dramatic explosion in the identification of novel neural antibody markers of autoimmune neurologic disease. Certain clinical features, certain findings on neuroimaging, and many of these neural autoantibody markers can assist clinicians in identifying patients with autoimmune neurologic disease, and then in initiating an immunotherapy trial to see if indeed the patient does respond. It's important not to miss an autoimmune dementia, because these dementias are treatable and reversible. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.